<laughs> so we stayed pretty well oiled for a oh, while. Oh, that, that champagne was good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole company fell out in their underwear. We didn't even have to dress, you know. Because <laughs> uh, everybody was pretty well looped. If I grinned in their face, it was a paradise for a soldier. Oh, God. And then suddenly I'm just realising about the Pacific. Because of the fact that I come down. And I had seen what the Germans had done to the Jewish race, and I'd seen what they had done to uh, the displaced persons. So that uh, by taking over their homes for a few nights to uh, bed down my men, and uh, if they picked up a few trinkets, I had no problem. Yeah. Nobody has ever taken their time to tell you how to handle a surrender. Jeez. We'll talk about that when we get there. Well, here we are, we've got it. Now, how do you handle this? That's a good point. One that could kill their own people and the regular German soldier would not that, that way. That is a kid. And the significance is that it wasn't until later when he had given me this pistol and I had a chance to look at it carefully that I realized this pistol had never been fired. There was no blood on it. That's the way all wars should end, with an agreement with no blood on it. And I assure you, this pistol has never, never been fired since I've had it, and it will not be fired. Fine reunion. Look at that bedazzled airborne jacket. And I extend the best wishes to all the men from Company E5. But we have great respect, and you might say affection, for each other. The type of affection that you get when you've lived through many dangerous situations together. And yeah, when you forge and fire together. You can rely on each other. If you see the people today, that bond's still there. The bond you can't explain. We didn't know Shifty the way the men mm. know Shifty. Yeah. So, but we, he started talking about it just in the last five or six years. Last oh, five, so five. recent. These weren't just anonymous statistics. These were people that I knew. And these were, and I told my daughter, I said, this guy here died at age 19 or 20. A whole life, never lived, no family, Nothing. No children. No no opportunity to have some satisfaction of building a life. Nothing. These guys have been with each other in the absolute base experiences of human existence. They were there with each other, knowing you're going to die, or thinking you're going to die, or seeing people die. I didn't expect to hear from the family members, but it's yeah, such a nice touch. Today, and uh, I admire that. Well, every. Army unit thinks it's the best, uh, <laughs> but we knew we were the best. <laughs> Am I a little proud of having once served in that outfit? You bet your life. I wore that eagle on my right shoulder for 18 years. Probably the proudest thing in my whole life, having been in Easy Company 506. The ones that are buried in the cemeteries, those are the true heroes, not us. We're just part of the work, that's all. And we thank God we got back alive. Hmm, I'd like to disagree. Do you remember the letter that my granny wrote me? I remember this Do you audio. remember how I ended it? I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day when he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no. But I served in a company of heroes. Stay away from the water bridge, you darling. That's the song toy like. Now that's what we say.
So after I watched that documentary, I was still kind of emotional. So I decided to leave my thoughts to another time. It's the next day. I liked how it followed Easy Company um, through their journey, just like the show did with starting with training and then um, going to England and then finally um, setting off to mainland Europe. And then we had like the moment with the replacements and we had Holland in Market Garden and um, we had into Germany and in the eagle's nest. It wasn't only enjoyable, it was also educational. It was kind of a, a good revision of the events that led to the end of the war. Um, I, I really enjoyed the archive footage. Um, some of it was just amazing, just seeing the, the men pra practice, you know, the paratroopers practicing um, the drops and um, you know, running up and down obstacle courses and stuff. It's just um, it's just mad to think that it was so long ago and these young men are so old now or no longer alive. But even better than the archive footage is obviously the, the talking heads themselves, the actual men from Easy Company, because hearing what happened from the horse's mouth is so much better than any narrator um, could have made it. Um, them talking about funny accents, funny accidents um, in the kind of dark gallows humour way that they can talk about really quite dramatic moments. Um, I really love how understated some of them were about almost dying and um, about mistakes that were made or even heroic acts that were performed. And also there's nothing more heart-wrenching than seeing an old man cry. That happened several times in the documentary and oh, it just just really got me. You can see there's a lot of pain that many of the men hold, all of them I guess, hold inside themselves. And what blew my mind was, sorry I've, I've forgotten um, whose family it was, but when they said that it was only a few years before that he had begun opening up about what happened uh, when he was fighting in the war, it's just mind-blowing, um, understandable and it's um, extremely common, but it's just amazing to think even with their own family, it's not something that's discussed. But I suppose that's why they continue to have their reunions, um, because they have this shared experience, um, this camaraderie and brotherhood um, that only each other can understand. And you know, sadly, as time goes on, more of them will be passing away, and um, hopefully at peace. You know particularly enjoyed the moment when Winters described the soldier um, apologising rather than um, making excuses or just crying for help. He apologised because he felt like he'd made a mistake and he was letting his team down um, and Winters described it as beautiful. It was just... Oh. And the way he was clearly so genuinely taken by that, how he judged that as a proper mark of character. Oh, and also I suppose when he described about um, the... Oh, I feel like I'm going to get like the um, positions wrong, the captain or the head of the, the Germans um, that he gave them, uh, gave Winters his gun and it had never been shot. That was a really like poignant moment and I love how Winters made that into uh, a proper symbol of what war should be. Um, yeah, that's such a good moment. Um, and also the description of the tattoo, how they got a tattoo when they came back to England for R&R &R because, um, you know, they might die, so woohoo, let's do whatever, let's get drunk and get a tattoo. Um, and that's kind of a, a funny story to recount, you know, the crazy revels they had in between war, but actually it's extremely sad that, um, in fact, these were kids in the nineties, nineteen, like nineteen years old in the early twenties, who didn't think that they might ever have to go home and <laughs> explain that tattoo to their family. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of um, grief as well as joy. Yeah, I'm really glad that I got around to watching that documentary because it was so worth it. It was so nice to see the real men themselves and um, 
real footage of the action uh, rather than the, the dramatised version. But at the same time, seeing it all and hearing the story told um, made me appreciate more how well Band of Brothers was adapted. And even when it comes to um, reenacting certain scenes, and the, the, the scene with the, para the parachuters... Even when it comes to reenacting real moments like um, jumping from the planes, all those parachutes everywhere against the sky, um, and losing their uh, belongings and things dropping from the sky, um, and also even just the footage of them training, it, it was just really reminiscent of the show. Um, the locations that they used and and the actors, like like I said, the guy that plays Garnier. Like when I watched the show, I was taken by how kind of um, like he had a certain unique way of speaking. Well, that was clearly modelled on a, the real life person. I think that's extremely sweet that he put that attention to detail in. Um, so I think I'm gonna watch the making of Band of Brothers. Um, the which does involve the actors, I believe, and talks about their preparations for the show, I guess. Um, and then next on the um, editing block <laughs> is Attack on Titan and Generation Kill. So hope you come back for that. If you enjoyed this video please like, comment, subscribe and hit the bell and hopefully you'll join me next time.